Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Hind, for the introduction. Thank you, the scientific committee, for inviting me to present in the meeting uh, today. So I was given the task to talk about CAR-T role in ALL. This is my disclosure. Uh, so, uh, as you know, uh, the relapsed uh, refractory AL, ALL carry uh, very poor prognosis. And in uh, these two studies, uh, large two studies showing that the five year overall survival uh, in uh, relapsed refractory ALL is less than 10%. Actually, in the first study, 7%, and the second study, 8%. So it's very poor prognosis. Now, even after the introduction of novel agent based, uh, like PITE therapy or PITE specific, uh, there is improvement, but it is the, the long-term survival achieved here is only 20%. So the prognosis here is uh, dismal. Uh, the chimeric antigen receptors uh, came into the field as a treatment of this type of disease. And uh, the, uh, the CAR T is a modified, uh, genetically modified T cells that uh, will uh, carry this uh, CAR uh, receptors. Again, it's specific antigens on cancer cells that will maintain the, the control uh, of, the, of the disease. CD19 uh, is an interesting antigen to target uh, on uh, B cell malignancies. As you see, it's expressed in different uh, phases of B cell development. Inside the bone marrow, you can have uh, LL and uh, uh, the CAR-T can target ALL, and in the lymph node uh, where the lymphoma will develop, so the CAR-T here can be used to treat uh, lymphoma. And uh, these are the two uh, main types uh, of the anti-CD19 CAR-T construct. Uh, the main differences here is the uh, co-stimulatory domain. We have two co-stimulatory domains, um, the CD28, and uh, for 1BB, and this will give some features regarding the proliferation, expansion, and the uh, disease control. So uh, we have uh, two uh, co-stimulatory domain. Uh, in comparison to 4-1BB, the CD28 uh, co-stimulatory domain is associated with rapid expansion, as you see in the left side uh, figure. Rapid expansion, and this can be associated with higher risk of toxicity like CRS, ICANS, but earlier exhaustion and lack of persistence. Uh, and this is clearly uh, demonstrated in the clinical trial using the CD28 uh, uh, CAR T. So, FDA approved CAR T uh, cell therapy in different diseases, but basically in ALL, there are two products approved. Uh, Proxicil uh, for adult more, uh, patient age more than 18 with relapsed refractory B cell uh, ALL, and Tizacil for patient, uh, pediatric patient up to the age of 25 with uh, PLL that is refractory on second or later relapse. So the first product approved is Tizacil or Kimraya was approved by FDA in August uh, 2017. Uh, for pediatric patient up to the age of 25 uh, with BLL that is refractory in second or later relapse. And uh, the CR uh, overall response uh, here was 83% with the CR uh, 63% and uh, all patients had MRD uh, negative. And in the initial report, uh, the overall uh, response was 81%, CR 60%, majority MRD negative, overall survival was 19.1 months, and the event-free survival was not reached. The three-year uh, follow-up showed the three-year event-free survival was 44%, uh, and three-year overall survival 62%. Uh, uh, the latest follow-up at five years, uh, showing that the five-year uh, event-free survival was 42% and uh, overall survival 55%. So if you compare this to the initial two the first two slides that I show, uh, the traditional therapy for relapsed refractory ALL, the long-term survival was less than 10% and with by specific antibodies, it was 20%. Um, so this compared favorable to the all-type therapy. 
And this was also confirmed in the real world evidence uh, we have in, the, in this table in the second column, the CIBMTR data for large number of patients, 249 patients. Uh, the result uh, regarding response event-free survival, overall survival in the real world data was e almost equal to the, to the pivotal, pivotal uh, trial where the CR was uh, achieved in uh, overall response was achieved in 85% in the real world data. Uh, event-free survival at 12 months was uh, 52% and uh, overall survival at 12 months 77.2%. The second um, uh, CAR T approved is Prexacil, and this is used mainly for adult patients, 18 years uh, or older. And this is Zuma 3 uh, study, uh, phase two, uh, single arm open label uh, multicenter. 55 patients infused, previous planetumab was used in 46% of the patient, and uh, allogenic transplant was used in 39% prior to CAR T. A patient. Uh, regarding the responses, you see 71% uh, of our all response, CR was 56%. Uh, and the uh, um, relapsed free survival was 58%, and overall survival was 71%. And this is large uh, systematic review of 16 uh, studies, 489 patients. Uh, the cumulative 12-month progression free survival 37% and 12-month overall survival 57%. Um, but the ma major problem here is that uh, so we can cure like you can say from 50, 40 to 50% of the patient. Uh, still 40% of the patients they relapsed post CAR T. So this this we need to target this uh, population of the patient uh, to reduce the risk of uh, relapse by intervention either pre CAR-T or after CAR-T. So if we look to this group, uh, the non-responder and relapse, this is a study uh, from Multicinder from USA uh, with the use of TSSL um, uh, CAR-T 185, children and young adolescent. 80 patients uh, relapsed, 12.5 um, uh, were not responder and 36% uh, relapsed. The 12 months overall survival was lower than the whole group here. The 12 month overall survival was 19% for the non-responder and 52% for the relapsed uh, cases. And for the whole group from the Eliana study, it was uh, more than 70% the 12 month overall survival. So we need to, uh, to look to this target and in the next few slides, I will try to take you over different factors that can correlate with increased risk of relapse or non-response post -car -T, and if we need to do different uh, type of therapies or modifications uh, to reduce uh, the risk of uh, relapse. So there are multiple factors that can correlate with increased risk of relapse, uh, including the type of the CAR T cell construct, either 41BB or CD28 customary domain. Uh, the T cell phenotype at the time of transduction, baseline disease characteristics like leukemia cytogenetic, molecular targets, uh, previous therapies uh, before CAR T, either uh, blenitumab, transplant, or other uh, agent uh, factors at the time of the infusion like bone marrow disease burden, extramedullary disease, CD19 uh, antigen uh, lo load, lymphodepletion type, uh, and post infusion factor like the persistence of CAR T or loss of B cell aplasia, detectable in GS, post CAR T infusion, and CD19 expression. So, the first one is the, the type of the costumility domain. As I told you, there are two types, 41BB and CD28. And as you see here, if we look to the CR, uh, these are the five studies uh, using uh, different types of uh, the costumility domain the first three columns for 41BB and the last two columns for uh, CD28. If you look to the CR, uh, the rate of CR is lower in uh, studies that use the uh, CD28 uh, uh, domain, uh, customary domain, and even the event-free survival, overall survival, is also lower in this uh, study that use the CD28 costumary uh, domain. So based on this, um, some guidelines recommend you may need to do transplant as a consolidation post uh, CAR T using the co, uh, CD28 co-stimulatory domain. 
the T cell uh, phenotype at the time of transduction is also important. The immunophenotype of T cells used to manufacture CAR T cells has also been studied and shown to influence the CAR T cell persistence, expansion, and long-term activity. There are compelling data demonstrate that T cell population enriched for early lineage cells have improved expansion and that early lineage cells are selectively depleted with continued courses of chemotherapy. So this is very important. When you give multiple lines of treatment, you will exhaust uh, or reduce the early line uh, T uh, cell at the, t at the development of the T cells, and that this can be associated with worse outcomes. So once the patient is relapsing, it's better to uh, take him to CAR T if there is indication and avoid uh, delay and uh, exposing the patient to multiple lines of the treatment. The other important factor is the baseline leukemia genetic at the time of the diagnosis. Uh, so this study, they look to uh, 230 uh, adult and pediatric patients uh, who were treated with CAR-T, and uh, they stratified them by the, cytogen by the cytogenetic risk or molecular risk into high-risk, intermediate, favorable, and uninformative, uh, depending on the genetic uh, markers. And as you see, the relapse free survivor and overall survivor post CAR T was not different uh, whether the patient is in the high risk group or the lower risk group. So all of them, they will have similar response post CAR T. There was one uh, Chinese study showing that uh, TB53 uh, mutation at the time of the diagnosis may associate with uh, lower uh, leukemia free survivor and overall survivor. So this patient, we know TB53 is a in general, it's associated with the very poor uh, prognosis and many malignancies, so we may need to target this population with different uh, approach. Uh, now, the impact of uh, CD19 targeted therapy exposure to like blinitumab prior to uh, CAR-T. So this is a large uh, retrospective study, 420 patient, uh, median age 12.7 treated with uh, t cell or other CAR-T, 18% received prior blinitumumab. Uh, if you see the figure in the upper part there, uh, the CR rate is different uh, in, in the group who had CR2 blina compared to those who did not have CR2 blina. So uh, if the patient doesn't have uh, CR2 uh, prior exposure to blina, they may have lower rate uh, of CR post CAR-T. Also, the, the same thing, the event free survivor, relapse free survivor, and overall survivor is lower in the group that did not have a response to prior exposure to blinitumumab prior to CAR T. Uh, the disease burden uh, uh, at the time of the infusion is also important. In the same study uh, shown in the previous slide, they looked to the disease burden at the time of the infusion and they divide them into high disease burden, low disease burden. The high disease burden defined by more than 5% plus in the bone marrow. Uh, and as you see in the blue curve, the high disease burden, they have lower uh, uh, event-free survivor, relapse-free survivor, and overall survivor. So uh, we should have uh, some uh, interventions to reduce the disease burden prior to, uh, to the infusion of the CAR-T by giving bridging uh, treatment or by intervention post CAR T. Also, this was shown in other studies from the this from Memorial Sloan Catering. Those with high disease burden, they have a lower probability of survival. And in this other study also showed the same effect. So this is a strong prognostic uh, factor. What about the extramedullary uh, disease? Um, in general, those with non-CNS, extramedullary disease tend to do uh, less favorable uh, after CAR-T treatment. And in this uh, study uh, by Elizabeth uh, from uh, multiple USA centers, 180 patients, 21% uh, uh, had extra disease. The response at best was 72%. As you see in the figure there, um, different organs involvement, the red bars indicate uh, uh, the extramural disease involvement prior at the presentation, prior to CAR-T, and the blue bars post CAR-T. So as you see, not uh, all organs respond to uh, CAR-T infusion. And this was proven in other studies, in Zuma-3 study, 
uh, the CRCR8 uh, was 50 percent lower lower in uh, extreme medullary disease, um, and also uh, in the City of Hope. Sorry. And uh, in the larger retrospective consortium study, also they have uh, shown worse event-free survival in extreme medullary disease. What about CNS disease? CNS disease uh, involvement. Uh, did not impact the outcome post uh, CAR T. And in this uh, large study from CHOP, 195 patient, um, uh, majority had seen this uh, negative disease, 66%. 34% had systemic plus seen this uh, disease, and 22% had uh, isolated seen this involvement. So, seen this disease did not impact the outcome, as you see in the and the curves there in the left uh, uh, side uh, in the figure B and D, uh, even the CNS involvement uh, is associated with better uh, responses and uh, overall survival compared to uh, systemic uh, disease. So this patient with CNS involvement can be considered for CAR T. Uh, attempt should be made to try to reduce the disease burden in the CNS prior to CAR T. Uh, cell infusion to reduce the risk of ICANS. And caution should be uh, practiced considering the risk of ICANS and the use of prophylactic anti-epileptic post-CAR T infusion. Uh, what about the MRD post-CAR uh, T? So we know MRD is a very strong predictive uh, prognostic factor post, uh, in the treatment of ALL. And this also has been shown uh, post-CAR T. Uh, and patients who did not achieve uh, MRD uh, post CAR T at uh, day 28 and three months, they had uh, very, uh, they have worse outcome regarding event free survival um, in this uh, study. Also, in the Liana study, um, they studied uh, the impact of MRD and the B cell ablation. If you see the left figure there, uh, those who had MRD uh, zero. The, uh, the curve is much better than those who had MRD positive. Uh, even if the patient uh, was uh, still in B cell aplasia and MRD positive, they tend to uh, behave uh, and have worse prognosis. And also in Zuma 3 study, um, CAR T cell persistence um, uh, did not impact uh, the, the outcome. So even if the patient uh, have uh, CAR T resistant, they will tend uh, to relapse. So if, if there is no detectable CAR T cells by, uh, by six months, uh, the area under the curve of CAR T cells uh, not correlated with duration of response. And they have shown here uh, most patients recover B cells by six months, but not no correlation with duration of response. So in Zuma 3, uh, if the patient lost the B cell ablation after six months, this was not correlated with uh, with worse outcome, but prior to six months, yes, there may be increased risk of relapse. In these two studies, uh, they show different uh, result, where if there is loss of basal ablation, there is increased risk of relapse. The first study from Seattle, PLAT 02 trial, 45 patients, loss of basal ablation was associated with increased relapse risk. And the other study from SHOP, uh, where they used humanized CD19 CAR T, uh, for 74 patients uh, were treated at the time, uh, uh, and uh, the B cell recovery was associated with uh, worse uh, relapse free survival, as you see in the blue uh, line there in the figure there. Now, at uh, the time of the relapse, we have three types of relapse CD19 positive, in the, in the majority of the cases, CD19 negative, and there is lineage switch. So the factors that the group that uh, you, uh, may have CD19 positive uh, relapse is patient with two or more briefest remissions. Uh, the group that may have CD19 negative relapse, uh, those who were exposed to 4-1BB cause stimulatory domain, prior planetomumab non-response, higher disease burden, and older age. And the lineage switch usually is associated with KMT to A uh, rearrangement. As, as shown in this retrospective study, 420 patients. Uh, so, in general, the relapse is around uh, 40%. Now, we studied the factors that can correlate uh, to increase risk of relapse. Uh, regarding interventions post CAR T to reduce risk of relapse or to treat relapses, one of the important interventions, uh, of course, is allogenic stem cell transplant. 
So in this uh, Zuma 3 study, uh, they studied the patient uh, who underwent CAR T, and uh, they compared the group that uh, received transplant uh, to the group that did not receive transplant post CAR T, and there was no difference uh, in the in the in the outcome between both groups, as you see in the figures here, uh, to those who received subsequent uh, transplant versus those who received uh, CAR T alone. The overall survival was the same. Also, this was shown in other studies. The, the, the upper figure from Memorial Sloan Catering, uh, there is no impact of transplant post CAR T in improving the outcome. And also, uh, from Fred Hutch, also uh, there is no impact on the relapse risk uh, by receiving or not receiving the transplant. However, there are some studies showed some benefit from a transplant, as shown in these uh, two uh, studies, the first study there from University of Pennsylvania. There is a um, positive impact uh, of transplant post CAR T, as you see uh, regarding the overall survival and the event free survival. And in the blood zero two study, uh, there is some uh, improvement in the, in the leukemia free survival, but was not statistically significant. However, it was statistically significant in those who have short B cell ablasia. So in those patients who have short B cell ablasia, there may be benefit of uh, doing transplant. Also in this uh, large study uh, using T cell real world data, 26% of underwent uh, post CAR T uh, allogenic transplant, 13% of the patient in CR, and 12% uh, after relapse, and 1% uh, for post CAR T uh, MDS. As you see, the, the curves of overall survival, event free survival, duration of response, uh, and the duration of B cell ablasia was maintained, showing that favorable effect of transplant uh, post CAR T in this uh, situation. So in this paper from Blood by Myers, uh, they uh, tend to show, uh, based on the factors that uh, uh, we presented, uh, you may have different approach to reduce the risk of uh, relapse. So if we take the pre-infusion, uh, uh, so if we take the pre-infusion risk uh, factors, we can divide them into uh, standard risk, where you expect event-free survival more than 50%, and uh, the group here, the standard risk, less than 5% blast pre-infusion, so low disease burden, or no other risk factors. So what you will do for this patient, you will do just post-CAR T monitoring by monitoring the MRD, either by NGS or BCR, or monitoring B cell ablasia. If the patient did not develop uh, MRD uh, positivity and he continued to B cell ablasia, he will stay in the standard risk. And we have the high risk uh, group, they, were, they have uh, more than 5% blast pre-infusion or uh, prior uh, non-response to plenitumumab. You can consider transplant for this group and initiate uh, donor workup. Or the other alternative, you just do the monitoring. And if the patient become positive or lost the B cell ablasia, you can t take him the, to the approach that we mentioned later on. And the baseline genetic uh, factors of the disease, as we mentioned, it, it did not impact the, the outcome post CAR T, except the B53. So B, B53, you may put them in the higher uh, risk uh, group. And post infusion risk factors, um, we have very high risk uh, group where the event free survival less than 10%. Those who lost the MRD at uh, day 28 or three months, or those who lost B cell ablasia prior to six months. And in this group, uh, the treatment options can be consolidative transplant, uh, CAR T cell reinfusion, um, especially if you target other antigen like CD22, uh, if the patient lost CD19, alternative CAR T cell infusions, or other experimental uh, strategies. So in summary, CD19 CAR T cells have transformed to the treatment of uh, relapsed refractory BLL, and now uh, the responses reach 80% uh, overall, and CR more than 60%, leukemia virus survival more than 30% and overall survival more than 60%. This compared favorable to the traditional treatment uh, without CAR T less than, seven, less than 10% and with plena or enitumab 20% overall survival. Relapse after CAR T therapy remains a, a substantial concern for many treated uh, patients. 
So we have to apply risk factors uh, and look to the risk factors associated with the success or failure of the therapy to optimize the outcome, um, and this is crucial. Both CAR T transplant can be considered for those who, who are at high risk of relapse, those who have pre-infusion high disease burden or resistance uh, MRD uh, post CAR T infusion. Thank you very much.